Inside every cell of your body, whether it's in your eye, your toe, or the little patch of skin on your elbow, there's a microscopic library containing the full instruction manual for making you. That library is your genome, a sequence of DNA letters 3 billion characters long. If someone printed it out in ordinary books, you'd need a bookshelf stretching across your living room and probably your neighbors too. And here's the kicker. This enormous blueprint is folded up so neatly, it fits inside a cell nucleus smaller than a speck of dust. Talk about extreme space saving. So what's in that blueprint? The human genome has about 3.2 billion base pairs, that's A, T, C, and G, the four chemical letters. Strung together, they form instructions for building proteins, regulating cells, and basically running the show. Yet here's the twist only about 1.5% of your DNA codes for actual proteins. The rest scientists used to dismiss it as junk DNA, like random filler pages. But we've since learned that much of it regulates how genes turn. On and off shapes the structure of chromosomes or carries ancient viral fragments. In other words, your genome is less like a clean IKEA manual and more like a messy family attic. Part instructions, part storage, part mysterious stuff nobody's sorted yet. Another fun fact, if you stretched out all the DNA in one human cell, it would be about 2 meters long. Multiply that by the roughly 37 trillion cells in your body, and your DNA would stretch to the sun and back hundreds of times. You're basically a walking spool of cosmic thread. And the wildest part, nearly every cell carries the entire library. Your toenail has the recipe for your eyeball, your eye cell has the recipe for your pancreas. The reason they specialize is that cells selectively read only the chapters they need. Now let's talk about similarity. You probably think your DNA makes you unique, and it does, but you're not as different from others as you might imagine. You share about 99.9% .9 of your DNA with any random human on Earth. That means the entire diversity of humanity from sumo wrestlers in Japan to surfers in California comes from a measly 0.1% difference. That 0.1% determines eye color, height tendencies, disease risks, even when whether cilantro tastes like soap to you. The margin between loving guacamole and hating it is literally genetic fine print. And it gets crazier humans and chimpanzees share about 98.8% of their DNA, which means the difference between binge watching Netflix on a couch and swinging from trees in the jungle is less than 2% of the code. Even bananas share about 60% of their DNA with us. So the next time someone calls you bananas, technically they're right. But here's a mind bender DNA is ancient. The genome is like a historical archive carrying the scars of evolution. Roughly 8% of your DNA comes from ancient viruses that infected our ancestors millions of years ago and never left. Think about it. Your body is carrying ghostly viral hitchhikers from before humans even existed. They don't cause illness anymore. Many have been repurposed by evolution for functions like placenta development. Without these viral stowaways, mammals might not even exist in their current form. So yes, you're part human, part virus, a genuine hybrid. Another incredible piece, the human genome wasn't fully sequenced until 2022. The Human Genome Project finished in 2003 cracked about 92% percent of it. But the last 8% full of repetitive stubborn sequences remained a mystery until a team finally mapped it two decades later. That's like saying we had most of the jigsaw puzzle done, but the trickiest corner pieces were missing. Now, with long red sequencing tech, the picture is complete. And that matters those missing regions include genes related to immunity, fertility, and disease. In other words, the final chapters of our instruction manual were only recently revealed. Then there's the strange reality of gene count. You might think humans being so complex have way more genes than other species. No, Nope, we have about 20,000, 22,000 protein coding genes. That's only about 2,000 more than a fruit fly and fewer than some plants. For example, rice has around 50,000 genes. So complexity isn't just about how many genes you have, it's about how you use them. Humans rely heavily on alternative splicing, where one gene can be mixed and matched to produce multiple proteins. Think of it like Lego sets. A small number of pieces can build a castle, a spaceship, or a robot, depending on how you snap them together. Even your sense of identity comes down to DNA. A stretch of just 20, 25 genetic markers is enough for forensic scientists to identify a person uniquely among billions. That's why DNA evidence is so powerful in courtrooms. At the same time, companies like 23andMe and Ancestry have turned your genome into a consumer product, promising to trace your family tree or tell you if you have Viking blood. But here's the caveat. These tests only look at tiny slices of your DNA. The genome is too vast to capture in a quick consumer kit, so take the your 5% Neanderthal claim with a pinch of salt. And speaking of Neanderthals, yes, 
many of us still carry their DNA. When modern humans interbred with Neanderthals tens of thousands of years ago, their genes slipped into our genomes. Today, people of non-African ancestry have about 1-2% Neanderthal DNA. Some of those ancient genes influence things like immune response or even hair thickness. So every time you catch a cold and fight it off, you might owe thanks to a Neanderthal ancestor. All of this makes the genome sound almost magical, but at its heart, it's chemistry, a chain of nucleotides faithfully copied generation after generation. Errors slip in sometimes, and those mutations are the raw material of evolution. Most changes are neutral, some harmful, a few beneficial. Over eons, those rare, beneficial tweaks shape species turning single-celled ancestors into the diversity of life we see today. The genome is not just your personal code, it's a living history book of life itself. And this is where things get even more fascinating. If DNA is the code of life, then tinkering with it means rewriting the rules. Which brings us to the next chapter, how science is learning not just to read the genome, but to edit it, and what that means for the future of humanity. And here's where the genome stops being just a fascinating book to read and starts becoming a text we can edit. For most of human history, DNA was like a mysterious manuscript written in code nobody could decipher. But now, we're not just readers, we're becoming authors. Enter CRISPR-Cas9. In 2012, scientist Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier unveiled this tool adapted from a bacterial defense system that lets researchers cut and paste DNA with stunning precision. Imagine having a pair of molecular scissors guided by GPS. Suddenly, genetic diseases that once seemed untouchable, like sickle cell anemia or certain forms of blindness, look potentially curable. In fact, in 2023, the FDA approved the first CRISPR-based therapy for sickle cell marking a historic milestone. But CRISPR is just the beginning. We're moving toward a future where editing genomes could become as routine as editing a Word document. Of course, that sparks ethical debates. Should we correct mutations that cause suffering? Most people say yes. But what about enhancing traits, height intelligence, athletic ability? That's where the phrase designer babies enters the conversation. The line between medicine and enhancement is fuzzy, and the genome forces us to confront it head on. And it's not just about humans. Scientists have already edited mosquitoes to resist carrying malaria, potentially saving millions of lives. Crops are being engineered to withstand drought pests and climate change. The genome is the ultimate toolkit for survival in a turbulent world. But every edit comes with risk. Genes interact in networks, not isolation. Tweak one, and you might accidentally ripple through others. Beyond editing the genome also challenges how we think about identity. Having a genetic variant linked to heart disease doesn't mean you'll have it. It means the dice are weighted. Lifestyle environment and plain luck still matter enormously. In fact, studies show identical twins who share virtually the same genome can live very different lives depending on their surroundings. The soul of the genome isn't determinism, it's potential. One of the most mind-bending facts about DNA is how stable it is across time. Scientists have extracted fragments from woolly mammoths, frozen for tens of thousands of years, even from Neanderthals buried for over 40,000 years. In 2022, researchers sequenced DNA that was nearly 2 million years old from permafrost in Greenland. Think about that molecule surviving long enough to let us peek into ecosystems long vanished. The genome is both a mirror of where we came from and a steering wheel for where we're going. So the next time you hear someone call DNA the code of life, remember, it's not just code, it's story. A story written in four letters, edited by time, and now, for the first time in history, editable by us. What we choose to do with that power will be the most interesting chapter yet.